Your skin acts as a barrier protecting your body from infections, but it does something else. In its infinite wisdom, it can actually give you skin signs about what's going on inside your body. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you seven common skin problems like these skin tags, which I'll explain a little bit later about what important problem that can be causing. So let's dive off with these white spots. Have a look at these ones on the right and these ones on the left. Any difference, which is worse, which is better. The one on the right is a pimple, nothing to worry about. The one on the left is something called gouty tophi. Now to the average eye, both look very, very similar, but, but gouty tophi can be caused by a condition called gout, which is a form of arthritis due to a buildup of something called uric acid crystals within your joints. These trigger these episodes of excruciating intense pain. You can also get redness and swelling around the joint. And these uric acid crystals can also deposit in your skin forming these slightly lumpy areas that are known as gouty tophi. And you usually find this appearance near joints, especially in the finger and toes. And the classic place to get the painful gout is the base of the big toe. So if you notice that you're always getting a red, swollen, red toe, the base, then that could be gout. Now, the worry with gout over a long period of time is that these crystals can form kidney stones and potentially, if it's untreated, can do scarring to the kidney and damage it. Also, people with gout are at a higher risk of things like heart disease. The good news is we now have medications that can bring down your uric acid levels and blood tests and monitoring can help you keep on top of gout. So, and thankfully now, it's a relatively straightforward condition to look after. Things that can help you with gout flare-ups if you're looking to try and treat it naturally is losing weight. That's the most important one. Avoiding meat and avoiding alcohol. These dark skin patches are called acanthosis negricans and usually they appear in the back of your neck, armpits, groin area, essentially anywhere where you've got skin folds. They don't tend to be painful or itchy. They've been described as having a velvety appearance, although clinically I can't say, you know, I've never held a piece of velvet and felt it and gone, yeah, you know what, that, that is similar. But that's the textbook description. Now, the reason for why they happen isn't quite clear, but it's thought that it's related to insulin resistance. And in insulin resistance, your pancreas is releasing more of this hormone called insulin, but the body isn't really responding to it, so it's just not working properly. And this is why this rash can appear if you are overweight or obese, because that can increase your risk of getting insulin resistance, but also it can be linked to diabetes and some types of metabolic disorders, like polycystic ovarian syndrome and Cushing syndrome. Now, I always tell my patients, if you notice this appearance, it's worth getting tested in terms of a blood test for diabetes. And often with the right treatment, lifestyle changes and weight loss, then the rash can go away on its own. So to number three, these are super, super common. And one a funny byproduct of working in the medical field or healthcare is that you're kind of subconsciously um, diagnosing people everywhere. You get on a bus, you look at the bus driver and you think, ha, huh, you see these and you think, I hope that they've got their cholesterol checked. Because these tiny bumps are called xanthomas, which are made up of fatty deposits that are under the skin, and their appearance can sometimes signal medical problems like high cholesterol. They tend to be flat, or they can sometimes be slightly raised, yellowish growths on or around the eyelids. The deposits aren't harmful in themselves. They don't cause problems, so I don't see people who come in with an itch problem. But as I said, high cholesterol, diabetes, and liver problems would be what I'd be looking at because your liver helps you process cholesterol. And if your liver is not working, then you can start to get the higher cholesterol. Now, some people have a type of high cholesterol, which is called familial hypercholesterolemia, which just means high cholesterol in the family. And they're more likely to get these little deposits around the eyes, whereas other people get a type of eruption called xanthomas on their forearms and buttocks. And I'll put some photos up here to show you what that looks like because the appearance is slightly different on those ones. And again, usually once you treat the underlying cause, these over time can reduce in size and go away. Although not all of them, there are cosmetic procedures to get rid of them if you want. Again, they're not harmful. So most of the time people just leave them alone, which is a sensible thing to do. Now on to number four, these small spidery blood vessels are very common. The odd one or two in your body, well, that just means you're normal. It's a thumbs up 
an approval that you have a normal body. But if people are getting lots of them, if you're getting more than four or five or more of them, then it can be related to an underlying health problem. Spider nevi is what they're called by doctors. Um, they're also called spider angiomas. They're basically dilated small blood vessels under your skin. Although it's quite common, it can affect about 10 to 15% of us. And they've got their name because they're like little spider webs of blood vessels under your skin. We do notice that people who have liver problems or liver cirrhosis tend to have more of these spider nevi blood vessels. But also the appearance can be completely harmless. Um, it can also be associated to using the combined contraceptive pill or when people get pregnant. Um, so there are thoughts that it could be related to the estrogen levels in our body. Um, when estrogen levels go up, then these blood vessel appearances can occur. And in liver disease and liver cirrhosis, what can happen is if your liver is um, not working properly and then it's not processing estrogen properly, so estrogen levels rise and again, that can cause this appearance. These little guys are called skin tags. I got them, you probably have them, and I don't know, your neighbor probably has them. I don't know, don't ask them. It's not a good conversation to start with. But they tend to be harmless growths in and around areas where you've got friction with clothes and things like that. Some families are actually prone to having them, so there is a genetic aspect to it. But if you have lots of them, it can sometimes be linked with diabetes or other metabolic conditions. As a doctor, I often see people who come to get them removed more for cosmetic and also because it's irritating if it's in an awkward position. But if somebody has a lot of them, we would think about doing blood work to make sure that they haven't got diabetes. Patients sometimes ask, like, will they go away, doc? What will happen? Uh, it's the mystery of life. They can get bigger. They can get smaller. They can stay the same. Um, so who knows? Oh, and then they can also get chopped off. Like if you've got it somewhere where you're putting a hat on and off, your hat can cause them to come off. And we sometimes see people who are like, oh my God, my skin tag fell off. What shall I do? It's like, Cool, job done. Just make sure he doesn't get infected. Now they say there's nothing worse than an itch you can't scratch. And especially if you've got an itch all over your body with no visible rash, then it may point to something more serious that's underlying. Sometimes liver disease or even kidney disease can cause a type of itch without a rash that can bother patients. Now both of these organs are important in helping your body get rid of toxins. And if they're not working properly, then the levels of waste products and toxins begin to build up and up. And as it builds up, it starts to work its way into your bloodstream and gets distributed all over your body, causing the classic itch. And of course, not all instances of itch in your skin is a cause for alarm. Now, the commonest type of itch that you will see is dry skin and things like eczema, where there is a bit of a rash that appears with a little bit of moisturizer used, things will settle down pretty quickly. But if your itch is ongoing and you don't see a, a rash with it, then it probably needs to be investigated. On to number seven and our final most important sign. This yellow tinge in the white of your eye can be a sign of a problem. And the problem is called jaundice. And this discoloration is a serious sign that often needs investigations to make sure there's no other medical issues going on. And jaundice builds up due to a buildup of bilirubin in your body. And bilirubin is a substance produced when we break down normal red blood cells. In a healthy individual, bilirubin is processed by the liver and ultimately uh, it's taken out of the body in our poo. When jaundice appears, it means there's a failing in the system somewhere. So uh, there are three real main areas or categories that you could think about something going on. This is pre-liver, so before your liver. Your body could be breaking down too many of, of its own uh, red blood cells for your immune system could be attacking your red blood cells and breaking them down, causing high levels that are coming into the liver. So pre-liver, there can also be things that are going wrong within your liver, so in your liver, and that are causing problems with the bilirubin. And there can be things after your liver, so blockages in ducts like your bile duct that prevents bilirubin from draining out of the liver and into your intestine. As always in medicine, it's not that simple, but I hope that kind of categorization can help you have a better picture of how things work and what can cause jaundice. Now, jaundice that settles on its own after a few days, and if you've especially had a history of it in childhood or throughout your life, can be something called Gilbert syndrome or Gilbert. 
I, I don't know. I guess making it sound French makes it sound more uh, exotic. Pretty, uh, Juba is essentially a harmless genetic condition in which people get episodes of jaundice, so that yellow tinge to the skin, especially if they are unwell or sometimes it can happen when they're very stressed doesn't normally cause any ongoing health problems and I tend not to um, tell my patients to worry about it but it's always good to diagnose it because then later in life if they get jaundice people aren't doing lots of investigations on them. And the way we normally diagnose it is through a simple blood test of your liver. So now that you're a pro detective at noticing these skin signs, well, what are other common skin signs of liver disease? I got you. Click here to find out. I'll see you on that video. Take care. Peace out.